Welcome to Pope on Film. I'm Bunny Williams. And And I am Reverend Steve. (laughs) All right. Or Pope Steve, if you want to go that way. Either way. You can call me Shirley if you want to. I've always kind of taken it that, like, you are the Pope, but Reverend is your title. Yeah, I I just like Reverend more. It surprises people, especially since I live in Oklahoma, really surprises the fuck out of these people. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it gets them off your back some. It's got to be tough living in Oklahoma. I don't know if I could do that. That's a bit too... Living in Oklahoma is like... Living in Oklahoma is like living in the Witness Protection Program. It's yeah. not necessarily a good thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Having lived in, like, the capital of Arizona and the capital of California, the the hardest thing for me to be, to transition fr- from living there to living in Oklahoma is going into a Walmart and being the only minority. Yeah. Really weird. I'm used to going into Dollar Trees and Dollar Generals and and you know, dollar stores, and it's like a war zone. It's like yeah. it's like downtown, like Baghdad, and the bombs are falling, and it's just absolute <laughs> hell. And I'm not used to being the only minority. It's really weird. Yeah. Um, we are pretty mixed in Colorado, and I think that's because of having so many military bases around. Yeah. Like guys just ro- rotate out of the army or the or the air force or something. They're like, yeah, I'm good here, and they just stay. Yeah, Oklahoma is just the just the whitest place in the world. It's amazing. The hardest Absolutely. type, the hardest type of person to find in Colorado, is somebody who is natively born in Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised at how many people here in Oklahoma are from California. Yeah. This seems to be some sort of place where people go to flee. Yeah. Actually, I don't know. quite like, surprising. That Oklahoma has got to be like the most conservative state. It's funny because right now it, it, there are all these uh, commercials on TV for uh, like a – the governor race and Senate races and stuff like that. And it's so hilarious to me because every commercial is just so-and-so claims to be anti-Obama, but (laughs) so-and-so agreed with Obama on one thing. Do we need this person as our governor? Vote for this guy. And then the next commercial will be, this guy shook Obama's hand once, that son of a bitch. It's just there it's impossible to have a a political commercial on television in Oklahoma without destroying Obama somehow. It's just absolutely amazing. It's like I live in some sort of alternate universe here and I just absolutely yeah. love it. There is that church. Like the Democrats too. There are look there is there is like a <laughs> I've found a surprising number of of liberals and Democrats and libertarians and just really uh, funny and creative, eclectic people here because apparently I'm I'm a magnet for that sort of type of person. But, yeah, yeah, it's it's about 80 to 90 percent Christian. And the funny thing is that they all expect everyone else in the world to be exactly how they are and agree with how – in the way that they – Think. It's really weird. I have a lot yeah. of conversations with people, and they're all so nice. Everyone here is just so nice, really nice and down-home, salt-of-the-earth sort of people. But then they're like, oh, well, thank you so much. You know, you are so nice. And, you know, uh, Pearl Harbor was because of the liberals, and they love Satan, and gay marriage is ruining yeah. everyone. But, you know, and, and sometimes in that kind of environment, you, you want to engage and in other times, it's just like, oh, yeah, really, really, yeah, really, really? Well, you're like, oh, my God, how do I get myself out of here? <laughs> yeah, every <laughs> once know? in a while, I will deal with someone where it's just, can I can I get your, your full name and where you're from? Because this is going to be a story that I'm going to be telling people for decades to come. <laughs> 
I, I, and also, it's a very Native American population here in Oklahoma, and I'm like uh, half Mexican, but more of a Mexican. But I, I, yeah. I get a lot of people that will come up to me. It's like, hey, what tribe are you from? And I'm like, I don't – what, pass? I, I'm not sure – I'm not sure what the answer to that's going to be. Yeah, I've I mean, always been you kind of considered making some shit up. I, I, I've, I've always been not kind a of. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> like a. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the uh, Automatopoeia tribe uh-huh. of North, South, East, Western Oklahoma. Yeah. That's gonna or be something like. Ride. Or, or something like, oh, what a dick I am, or something like yeah. that. Just run that together, make it sound Indian. I just want to get some of that gambling money. Off on themselves. Huh? Yeah, I just want to get some of that casino money. As far as I heard, you don't really need to be an Indian. Really? You just have to claim to be an Indian. And there's, like, no way to dispute that claim. So, like, I, I've heard that a lot of the Indian casinos are not owned by Indians. Anyway. There are a lot of Indian can casinos. Say, just can I like, say Indian, man? I get confused. I don't know. Uh, there are a lot of Native American casinos around here, and it's so wonderful because there's, there's a specific type of talent that populates those places. So it's yeah. always nice to see, like, the Grand Casino welcomes, and then Rich Little and Heart. <laughs> And it's like, ooh, okay, wow, you're getting some big names there. Rich Little's still alive, and he's still performing? Yeah, he's still alive. He's still alive. He's still doing the Ronald Reagan impressions that everyone's so clamorous for. Yeah. I, I don't think I have room in my life to do another podcast, but me and a friend were talking about doing a doing a podcast out of just all dead celebrities. Dead celebrities. Yeah. He would just be whatever celebrity, and I would just start, in, you know, I would just start interviewing him. You know who I'm surprised is still alive? Abe Vigoda. That guy was like born old. Yeah, he's one of those people that's born old. He has an yeah, amazing I mean, career because he was in The Godfather, and he was in uh-huh. The Godfather too, and he was also in Nickelodeon's Good Burger. Oh yeah. And that's a really weird – how do you get from being in The Godfather 2 to Nickelodeon's Good Burger starring Keenan and Kel? That's a really weird transition. Is, yeah, but I he got casted a Barney Miller, and he had his own show for a while. Fish. Fish. Yeah. I love Fish. There's actually a website, and I go to it a lot, and it's uh, a, I'm going to get the, the address wrong, but it's Is a Pagoda Alive? Dot com. Yeah, I, I was I, I had started with a friend of mine several years ago, uh, the Mickey Rooney Death Watch. Because Mickey yeah. Rooney kept popping up, you know, we had everybody dying, Frank Sinatra and all that, and Ricky Mickey Rooney kept popping up on the shows. Maybe Ricky uh, maybe Mickey Rooney is living for so long because he's so short. Well, he just he just recently died, so now I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. He lived he for so long, but I thought maybe that. because he's maybe because he's a hobbit, he was able to just live a little bit longer than your Hoss, normal. Yeah. I wonder how long him. Tom Cruise is gonna live because he's like a Smurf. Uh, I, I I still have Tom Cruise pegged for a suicide somewhere oh. along the line. Tom Cruise, man. You can't be that repressed your whole fucking life, man. And Scientology have, is weird. I have such a hard time. Oh, I, I absolutely hate Scientology, and and I hate Tom Cruise as a person, but then it, he can be a really good actor sometimes. He really can be. He can. Amazing. He can. I, I was ready to just... I was ready to hate him with Interview of the Vampire. I was ready to just hate yeah. every second of that movie and just tear him a new one. But God damn it, he does a good job in that. Yeah. And I saw that, that the movie that just came out, uh, Edge of Tomorrow. And he was Edge really good tomorrow. in that. Yeah. Yeah, the the science fiction. 
it's a science fiction Groundhog Day. Right. Yeah, I've, I've seen the I've seen the previews. I just haven't actually seen the movie. But but the previous movie he did, Jack Reacher, was good. The, like just before Oblivion, you know, yeah. it was a it was a it was an intelligent action movie. Which one, Jack Reacher like, or Oblivion? Yeah, Jack Reacher. Jack Reacher. So okay. I guess it was supposed to be kind of born identity or something like that. I, I don't yeah. really do many action flicks, but but this was pretty good. Yeah, and then Oblivion was a uh, live action Wally. Yeah, kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I watch a lot of kids' movies because yeah. of my children. <laughs> I watch a ton of it. It can well, be a bit let's, difficult. Let's dive into Rock of Ages because I'm betting on this one. Oh my God. Rock of Ages. I saw that in the theater the day it came out. I was in Dallas, Fort Worth. In between yeah. a, 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 a airplane ride and a train ride, and I had like eight hours to kill, and I saw it was playing, and I said, "Why don't I go see this? Because it looks like it might not be as bad as I'm assuming it's going to be." But it, it said something that it was like a Friday, and it was three in the afternoon, and there were, including me, there were about six people in that theater. Yeah. I had seen the trailer for it, and I just kind of – somebody posted it on Facebook or some shit like that. And I just kind of looked at this, and I was like, this can either be the worst movie ever made or it's going to be totally awesome. In either case, for somebody like us, it's a fucking win-win, <laughs> you know? Yeah. If it's that bad, we're going to love it. But, but then when I finally watched it, it's because you found a copy and posted it on your blog. Yeah, yeah, I did. <clears throat> and it was there for a couple of days. And I forget if I watched it alone the first time or if me and Jeannie watched it together. I think we watched it together for the first time. And it was just like, you know, and you're, you're just set to kind of hate this. And you're just set to to be ready to just make a lot of fun of it you know, and tease the movie and everything. But I'll tell you, man, I, 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 I'm going to be a champion for this movie. I think it's an excellent movie on the, a the lot one of thing, different levels. The one thing that I really hate about this movie is that it's one of those movies where, because there are different types of bad movies. There are some bad movies where, okay, well, you know, you can tell that the crew is having fun and it's it's tongue-in-cheek and they're having a blast. And then there are those movies where it's obviously bad. Like I'm thinking of uh, uh, The Room when I say it. But there are those movies that are really just god-awful bad, but you can tell that the people who are making it think they're making the greatest movie of all time. And I I can't imagine... They spent so much money on Rock of Ages, and they they released it, you know, in the middle of June, in that blockbuster period, and they really must have thought that they were just going to create the movie that was going to change the world. That's what I'm fighting for, because I still think this movie can. (laughs) Man, there is so much much that kind of takes me back on just how good, just flat out good it is. There is, there are things done in this movie that I see that are just amazing. First off, the movie is a giant cliche with a the whole bunch thing. of smaller, with a bunch of smaller cliches built into it. Like everything in this movie is a cliche of something. Can I and mention I something that, that I find that genius? Can I mention something that has always bothered me about the movie Rock of Ages? I mean, a lot of things yeah. bother me about the movie Rock of Ages, but I find it really weird that um, Tobey Maguire produced this. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, he's one of the producers of the movie, and I, I can't tell any reason why. Mm-hmm. I, except maybe the weird musical dance number he did in Spider-Man 3 when he was turning evil, maybe that maybe that, that really spoke to him and he said he wanted to bring more musicals into the world. The thing about Rock of Ages is when I saw it in the theater, and every time I've seen it since, every frame is an embarrassment for me to watch. 
Like I don't oh, believe in guilty pleasure. I don't know pleasure. why, man. Every frame is beautiful. <laughs> I don't believe in guilty pleasures. Like if you like something, yeah. you should like it. You shouldn't feel bad about liking it. But Rock of Ages, I feel really bad for liking this movie. I really <laughs> do. I I don't think you should. I don't think you should at all. I think it's a great movie. I I, I like this movie. I don't. I. It's not even like I like it ironically. You know. This is not a so bad it's good movie for me. This is a good movie. Oh, God, I hate this movie. I hate this movie so much. I love hating this movie. There's so much weird stuff about it. Like Brian Cranston, he took a break from Breaking Bad so that he could be spanked by a secretary to, like, a Pat Benatar song. Well, let's start there. I mean, first off, the the actors that they've picked, they picked, you know, the top-notch actors. You know, so we, you know, t- if we're going to call it bad, we can't blame the acting anywhere, really. I know. can't blame a bit of the singing because it, I, it, it, Tom Cruise does okay. The singing in this movie is no different than if you went to a karaoke bar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing that's really blowing my mind in this movie in terms of right. singing. I mean, Tom Cruise but does I, okay, but it, it's not not something to write home about. I think that's all intentional. And that's what I love about this movie is that I feel that this was all intended. This was all meant, you know? Kind of yeah. like how I feel about Popeye, you know? Like, I oh, really God, don't Popeye. like... I don't really... I don't like Popeye at all, but it looks like a Max Fleischer cartoon. Yeah, there's something so bizarre about that Popeye movie. I Something think just because so... you're seeing that in live action, but, you know, the intent was there, and they carried it out. And they carried it out perfectly. You know what I mean? I yeah. still don't like it, but I can appreciate it that you really got the whole look and the whole feel and the whole depression of it, because those early Popeye cartoons were really kind of depressing. Yeah, they are. You know? So that's kind of how I feel about Rock of Ages, that there is so much intent here where anything, again, like like all the cliches, I, I really have the feeling the screenwriter wrote up a bunch of cliches and was like, okay, this is an act one cliche. This is an act two cliche. You know, and laid out all the cliches and then wrote the story around that. I hate <laughs> you know. It. And I think, that, so, I think that's the kind of genius. There's so many cliches. The, the Sherry Christian comes from Oklahoma mm-hmm. and uh-huh. moves to L.A. And also, her name, Sherry Christian, it, that guarantees two songs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is really horrible. I'll tell I'll, – I'll, I'll, there are some good things about Rock of Ages. I will say this, though. I, I don't like the movie. I hate the movie. But I love being a fan of the movie to piss off my family. Because my family hates, absolutely hates this movie. I forced everyone to watch it. Everybody hated it. My youngest daughter, she was eight at the time. She sat there, and this is the greatest review for the movie Rock of Ages. She laid down on the floor and watched the movie for a full hour before turning to me and said, Daddy, what's this about? And I just gave her a little golf clap. My my oldest daughter, she just absolutely hated it. She kept giving me just death stares through the whole movie, like, how, why am I watching this? But the best is that I, I, I finally forced my, my wife to watch the movie. And halfway mm-hmm. through the movie, she said, pause it, I need to go to the bathroom. So she went to the bathroom and faked dead. And what? She faked dead. Because yeah. that's how much she did not want to watch this movie. And my daughter, <laughs> my oldest daughter came up to me and said, Daddy, I have some sad news. Um, mommy's dead, so she can't watch the movie anymore. <laughs> and that, it, 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 no, you're not doing that. You're coming over here and watching. This is Stacey them. Jacks we're talking about. What's wrong with them? This movie is great. The musical choices, okay? 
the musical choice. So, yeah, the, the, the music, the music is wonderful. This is the only musical where I automatically knew all of the lyrics to every single solitary song. I'll yeah. give you that. The music yes, is great. But here's here's my point: is that again, it's the whole intent that I see in this movie. Okay, they picked all of the good songs from that period. Yeah. Not the great ones. Yeah. You know, all the songs that you were kind of like, man, that's okay. <laughs> you know? I especially like the Those mashups the that they that do. I especially mm-hmm. like the musical mashups that they do where yeah. they'll get two different songs and kind of combine them together into one. I did like that a lot. A couple yeah. of those I still have on my phone to drive my children crazy. And you have the, you have the main cliche, okay, the main cliche, the one cliche that runs consistently throughout the movie is basically a Save the Rec Center movie, you yeah. know, which was really popular in the t- at, at that time. The yeah, time Rock of Ages 2, minute. Electric yeah. Boogaloo. Exactly, yeah. You know, so it's not a rec center, it's the bourbon, you know, which is obviously not a reference to the whiskey, (laughs) you know. So so right there, that's it. You know, here's the club. It's an iconic club. All all the kids hang out there, and it's going to go under. It's going to go under unless some miracle happens, (laughs) you know. That's the point of one of those movies. One of the things that I really do not like about this movie, and maybe this is just because I'm such a huge fan of 30 Rock, but I did not believe Alec Baldwin in his role in this yeah. movie. I felt that he was just a bit too much of a right-wing character that he played in 30 Rock. He had a bit yeah. of 30 Rock scenes in there. Yeah, I never watched 30 Rock, so I was really able to detach from that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I thought he was... I, I, I thought... In some of the the tells that he did, he could have been a little more subtle. Yeah. You know? Because all one of a sudden the, it was like, wow, that was a really gay move. One of the, one of the big, big really problems, yeah. one of the big, big problems that I have with the movie Rock of Ages is that it's loosely based on the play Rock of Ages. And in the play Rock of Ages, Tom Cruise's character, Stacey Jacks, in the movie, his character... It, it, the love interests in the movie have that sort of Romeo and Juliet, uh, like, crossed connection sort of thing where they think that something happened and it didn't happen, and so that brings everything down. And so the guy, uh, Wolfgang von Colt, thinks that Cherry Christian banged Stacy Jacks when, in fact, he wow. didn't, and Stacy Jacks turns out to be the hero and saves everybody. In the play, however... Stacy Jacks does bang the chick. The chick is under age. He gets brought up on sex crime charges and flees the country. Yeah. In the play, he's just a horrible, horrible person. But because <laughs> Tom Cruise is playing the character, oh, well, let's rewrite everything because this is Tom Cruise. But we have a better cliche. That's like, the, uh, again, that's the perfect cliche for this movie. It is Stacey that same Jackson's thing that we've seen film. a million times. What are you times. talking about? What's that? Stacy Jackson's filth. What are you talking about? <laughs> we have to get him no, out. Not so much, no, 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 not so much about Stacy Jackson in particular, but the whole boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl back kind of dynamic that those two have going on. And, again, she is the the sweet thing from Oklahoma. <laughs> she would not have done that. Not in this movie. She wouldn't have done that. This movie is you know, so would cheesy have, that right in the beginning, once everyone on the bus. The movie is so cheesy that right in the beginning, like right in the beginning, when everyone on the bus is singing, I, <laughs> right then, I'm just like, really, this is what this is going to be? Okay, let me buckle up because this is going to be rough. <laughs> This is going to be a difficult film to watch. One of the things that I love doing to piss off my family because yeah. I really am the, like, Andy Kaufman of my family, mm-hmm. is that we'll be driving somewhere, and the radio will be on, and some song will come on, like, let's say, uh, Wanted, Dead, or Alive. And someone will subconsciously go, oh, hey, this is a good song, let me turn it up. And then that's my 
opportunity to pounce. <laughs> and and I, I and I'll just I'll just write it until my family goes nuts. I'll just go, Oh man, Wanted Dead or Alive, this is a classic song. Oh man, Arsenal is wonderful. J- Stacy Jacks is a god. This song came out before he got clean too, back when he was still drinking like crazy. You know I saw Stacy Jacks at the bourbon room? Oh yeah, Wolfgang von Cole opened up for him, he sang I Wanna Rock. It was really awesome. You know, Wolfgang von Cold, of course, joined Arsenal later. They broke up, but then they got back together. Oh, it was an amazing show. Really wonderful. At that point in time, my family wants to kill me. <laughs> oh, that's great, though. Yeah. I just write yeah. it out. Anytime any one of those songs come on, I have to point out that it was in Rock of Ages, and my family just goes nuts. <laughs> And speaking as a former professional wrestling fan, I, I, uh-huh. I find it really weird that one of Stacey Jacks' bodyguards is former WWE and WCW champion Kevin Nash. Big sexy. Yeah. Yep. Did they Big sexy him Kevin Nash. That of brown dye? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, I mean, I that guy's this. hair was always grayer than mine. Yep. It's like I see Rock of Ages and I go, finally. You know, in 1999 and 1998, I kept telling everyone, yeah, sure, Kevin Nash is good in NWO, but wait until he does a musical. (laughs) And everybody would be like, Steve, you're crazy. And I'm like, mark my words, one day Kevin Nash will do a musical with Tom Cruise and a monkey, and it's going to be amazing. It's going to change the world. What Any the movie that, gets extra points if they if have a monkey. monkey. Yeah, that's it's, a good point. I mean, that's just automatic, so we just have to give it a couple of extra points for that. I need to get myself one of these uh, Blu-ray DVD players, because I don't have uh-huh. one of these Blu-ray DVD players, but apparently the Blu-ray of Rock of Ages is the extended edition with an extra song, and the movie's a lot longer, and my family has told me that they will kill me. If I get this. We have the extended have edition. We have the extended edition. I don't know uh, what extra song was because we only saw it that once on your blog and then it was gone. Yeah. So we we're going to watch it a second time, so then we just bought it. You know so, what else pisses me off about this movie? It's one of those yeah. movies that it's like, oh, hey, we're going to have a strip club in the movie, but you're not going to see anything because we're going to be PG 13. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's like seeing a strip club on TV. Yeah, but again, th- that you saw strip clubs in movies of that time, a lot of them. You know, one, it was like one, one thing, of those, it was like an '80s cliche. You would have to have a strip club someplace. One thing that I will say that I love about Rock of Ages is I loved seeing the inside of a Tower Records again. Yeah. <laughs> Because I loved Tower Records and seeing that one song uh, that uh, what's his name Wolfgang von Colt sings to the chick, it, it, and it's set inside of a Tower Chupac Records. Hero? I went nuts. Yeah, yeah Tupac Hero. I went nuts yeah. when I saw that. Love Tower Records. <laughs> you know, records uh, are coming back. Is that weird to you that records are coming back? That record's I, coming back? Yeah. I went to yeah. Target the, the other day, and they like had a vinyl. huge section of LPs. I thought it was so weird. Yeah. Kids like vinyl. I hear them talk about it all the time. So amazing. A, a so kid just recently came out against cassettes. <laughs> <laughs> My old, horrible, weird-sounding car still has cassettes, and I love cassettes. Cassettes yeah. are my jam. I love cassettes. I still have a bunch yeah. of mixtapes that I did last century, and I love them. <laughs> I hope uh, when is when is eight track gonna come back? When eight track is really track? bad. Eight track, eight track was horrible. Really you could cut always, out in the middle of your songs and stuff. And you could always kind of hear the other songs in the background. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. But I miss eight track. And then you would listen to your favorite song on the eight track, and right in the middle it would cut and jump the track. Yeah. So you'd have Kids to wait nowadays, for the song. No, no, no eight track. Again. You had to push that thing in. You had to just ka-chang. You had to push that in there. I miss eight track. Except the one thing in the defense of eight track 
the two XL eight track player was awesome. Remember him? Um, I, I'm sorry, I just got distracted. My oldest daughter, Emerald, just told me that there's a website called eight track dot com. Is that is that it? Yeah. It's apparently a website where you can make your own uh, playlist and stuff like that. Well, that's good, but you don't know what an eight track is, do you? Ah, oh, she doesn't know what an eight track is. That's crazy. Do you know what Gilligan's Island is? Well, you do, Amber, but do you know what Gilligan's Island is, Emerald? Man, there are so many shows that I grew up with. The kids just won't grow up with them anymore. <laughs> just so sad. Uh-huh. I Dream of Jeannie. Have you ever seen that? I oh, sad. <laughs> Bewitched. Do you know the two, the two Darrens? No? Oh, sad. Really sad. <laughs> Rock of Ages. Let's talk about Russell Brand for a while. Oh, Russell Brand. I, 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 just in general, I'm a big <laughs> Russell Brand fan. I love that dude. He's pretty hilarious. We we had a radio station here for about a year at, yeah. in Oklahoma, AM fifteen sixty, and it was twenty four seven stand up comedy. Yeah. And for a year, I was in heaven. And like any normal station would play music, they would play a, a clip of Russell Brand, a clip of uh, a, a clip of uh, Stephen Wright, uh, Steve Martin doing stand up, yeah, Bobcat Goldclade. They would do. Uh, it, it was absolutely wonderful. They would play a lot of Russell Brand, and it was the first time I ever heard him do stand up. And he was a mm -hmm. lot smarter than I thought. I, I surfed YouTube for Russell Brand clips, uh, and I caught him on – oh, God, what's the name of the show? Uh, I caught a clip on him. Oh, Honey, help me out here. But who's, the, who's the chick who has the show that Ralph Carmen hates? Chelsea Handler. Okay. Chelsea oh, yeah. Handler. <clears throat> and he had his book, Bookity Book. And Wookie was, Wookie was, or something like that. Wookie Wookie, yeah. And he was promoting it on the show. Um, and she had asked him the question, a question out of the book, like, uh, I hear you were addicted to sex and drugs. And he was like, um, oh, how did, how did it go, man? Because it absolutely floored me. Uh, don't get old, I'm telling you. This is what happens. You forget <laughs> stuff. Uh, Holy crap, I'm on Wikipedia right now, and it says that there's a cameo appearance by Eli Roth in the film? Yes. Uh, oh, when yeah, he's the director the of the Z guys. The Z guys. The Z guys. Double the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> double the Z, double the E, double the flavor. But again, man, that's perfect. You know, they just <laughs> took everything about it, gathered up all the cliches. There you go. <laughs> that, I did like a couple of the, the boy band that were in there. I saw Sebastian Bach in the film. I saw Sebastian Bach, yeah. Debbie Gibson's in the crowd at one point, and um, one of the guys from Ario Speedwagon. I mean, I like that. Yeah. The whole film just seems like such an embarrassment. I, I, I have such a hard time with this film. Such a hard time. Paul Giamatti should never sing again. We should make a law for that. Just a non-singing Paul Giamatti. Have someone follow him into the shower just to make sure that he's not going to break into a song in there. But that's the other thing about this movie. Except for Paul Giamatti, everybody was highly sexualized. Yeah. You know? Everybody yeah. wore some kind of sexy outfit and, you know, all of that. Everybody was extreme. Yeah. You know, all of the characters were all the way out there. Like Wolfgang von Colt. If there is not a yeah. porn actor that is going by that name, then there should be. We could cut him into a copy of the Warriors and play it, and nobody would notice. 
You know, the especially warrior. with that outfit you was wearing in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could paint warriors just on the back of any of those shirts, <laughs> those muscle shirts he was wearing. Yeah, and pretty get much. Him, get him in there. <laughs> I did like the mashups of music on here, like when they did More Than Words in Heaven. I hate both of those songs, but the two of them uh-huh. together was pretty good. Um, Jukebox Hero and I like I Love Rock and Roll, that was really good. And the one near the end, uh, We Built This City and We're Not Gonna Take It, I liked that. Yeah. Those were really mm-hmm. good. I would have liked more of that. In the play, there's a lot more. There's a whole lot more of that sort of smashing together of different songs. Yeah, I, I, I really wish they wouldn't have chosen We Built This City, though. I hate that song with everything in me. Why do you hate that song? You know? Because because it was Starship, for God's sake. Oh, God. With Starship. Grace Slick singing. You know, I mean, this was... You know, White Rabbit. <laughs> you know, so Starship was almost like a sign, like those times. Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! I'm having one of those moments. Coming back. Okay. I'm having one of those moments. Starship. They uh-huh. sang a song on the soundtrack um, of the movie Mannequin. Nothing's gonna stop us now. Yes. Uh huh. That was one of my gym songs. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, we mentioned yeah, that in the that... last episode, that I kept getting mm-hmm. scarred from various yeah. cheesy 80s songs. That was one of the songs. Nothing's yeah. going to stop us now. Oh, God, I got a chill when you started talking about Starship. <laughs> How odd is that? Yeah. yeah. I was well, in a that's pool with a bunch of, whole... like, half-naked old people. Yeah, that's like the whole point of, of why I hate that song so much. Because, cause again, these are, you know, I mean, not exactly all of them, but this is the band that did, you know, White Rabbit and want somebody to love, you know. So it's like, okay, the 60s are just over. I mean, it's like if Jim Morrison became an accountant, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, so. I'm sad that the Beatles broke up, but I'm happy that the I don't have to have seen the Beatles go through a disco phase. And I'm happy that I didn't have to see the Beatles go through an 80s music phase. Yeah. Are you there? I stopped hearing you. No, I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> like Jefferson, yeah, Jefferson Starship, that was a great band. And then Starship was the 80s Jefferson Starship. Well, it was Jefferson Airplane, then went to Jefferson Starship. I forget when. I think that was just like later in the 70s. And nobody yeah. really cared anymore. Yeah. Uh, and then became just Starship. So you, you know what I was surprised about Rock of Ages? The actual song Rock of Ages. What is that? Uh, um, Death Leopard? You hear I'm that for about 30... Is. You hear that for about 30 seconds in the movie. Yeah. When uh, Stacy Jacks is finally showing up at the bourbon room, you hear it for about 30 seconds, and that's it. I figure if this is a movie called Rock of Ages, you're going to hear that song. But, no, you hardly hear it at all. <laughs> and, of course, the best scene in the whole movie had to have been the, the Alec Baldwin, Russell Brand. Falling in love. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have I have nothing against homosexuality and I have nothing against gay people, but the idea yeah. of sweaty Russell Brand and weirdo hairy Alec Baldwin getting together is just a hideous, hideous like thought in my mind. That turns into an engram, and I need to become a Scientologist to get it out of my brain. Yeah, I need so, to pay so, lots of money to get it out of my out of my head. So them covered in dirty motor oil at the time would just push that right over the edge, huh? God, that's just that's horrible. Horrible. Sliding around naked in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> this is the two of them drunk as hell. Drunk as goddamn skunks. <laughs> we should be gay together. Why not? I don't know. Let's just do it. <laughs> That was awesome, and they staged it all 
like a little wedding scene and everything. Yeah, and and a cheesy scene where they're spinning around. Uh huh. Got to have a spinning mm-hmm. around scene in there. And then the cleaning guy or assistant or whatever he is walks in, says somebody's waiting for you in like one moment. Yeah, he interrupts a song. They're about to <laughs> sing some song, and then he walks in. The one Mexican in the movie yes. ruins everything. Yeah. Oh, God, I hate this movie. I hate this I, I There wonder... are so many good people in this movie. Uh-oh. Will Forte is in this movie, for Christ's sake. You're looking at this through the wrong eyes. This movie is awesome. (laughs) The Z guys. The Z guys. The (laughs) guys. But the two people that they got. Okay, okay, okay. Since you brought that one up, and then later on, they're behind the Hollywood sign. The guy and girl meet up on the Hollywood sign accidentally. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and then she broke down. She was like, I'm a stripper, which, which <laughs> she really wasn't. But then he's like, I'm in a boy band. She's like, you yeah, you're, you're a PG-13 <laughs> stripper. You're not an actual stripper. There's no clothes coming off in this. Mm-hmm. In this version of a strip club, it, that's the one thing about this movie is that the, throughout the entire movie they're trying really hard to to go. Okay, well this is this is you know Sunset Strip and it's the 80s and it's dirty and it's and it's nasty, but it's also PG-13, so let's keep it clean. But it's supposed to be dirty. It's like a Disney version. Um, but I think they, the they were strip. mocking all of that. They, you know, with all the cliches and everything, they were just mocking all of that. I don't think that they were smart enough to be mocking that. <laughs> like, there I, are a lot of good people. I this, disagree, because, like, again, and... there's so much intention in what they've done, from the writing to the song choice to the characters and what cliches they were going to use. They knew what they were doing. That's 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 exactly what they wanted to do. What you see on that movie, Ugh, and some of the writing was awesome. That. I have a hard time believing that this whole movie. I just picture a whole bunch of Hollywood executives just throwing money in a hole. That's what I picture. How much was the budget on this film? It looks like they spent. It would have to be pretty fucking high. Crap ton of movie. It, it looks like they spent a crap ton of money on this thing. I, mean, like I, I don't lot. think Tom Cruise. I, I don't think Tom Cruise would ever take a pay cut out of love. You know, like oh yes, I'm okay. Okay, I figured it out right here. It cost seventy five million dollars to make, and it oh. had a worldwide total of fifty nine million. Ooh, not good at all. <laughs> and yet, the film had the seventh highest. Opening ever for a musical. Mm-hmm. But see, that's exactly what that's exactly what makes a cult movie. You know, yeah. what what yeah. good cult movie ever had a good box office? I would I would definitely see this at midnight somewhere. Oh, I would love it. I would love it. Definitely go see this at midnight. And just like Tom Cruise, I would go shirtless and sweaty with a bunch of tattoos drawn on me in marker. (laughs) When I saw him and he's got all of his tattoos on and he looks all emaciated, 1980s Axl Rose, the first thing I thought of, you know what I thought of? I thought of the movie Snatch. Yeah. That's a damn good movie. But Brad Pitt obviously got drawn on for an hour at the beginning of every scene so that he could have his tattoos on. That's what I thought of. (laughs) Tom Cruise had some very drawn tattoos. And it does seem a little bit like, oh, wait a second, you've been sweating a little bit. It looks like this tattoo isn't as strong as it was in the last scene, but I'm not going to bring that up because we're all having fun here. You, you, I'm sure you probably heard that they're planning out. They're still talking about making a, a Bill and Ted Three. That's another movie right there. That's another movie where someone successful has gone back to the one thing that made them famous. Mm-hmm. 
I would absolutely love to see this as like a hard drama, <laughs> Bill and Ted 3, and Keanu I... Reeves does a serious version of Stacey Jacks. <laughs> I'm a big, big, ardent believer in the second Bill and Ted movie. Yeah? Logan I Strange? really like that second Bill and Ted movie. I mean, they play they death. They Battleship with death, man. What's not to love? <laughs> <laughs> I I have a I have a big soft spot for um the first Bill and Ted movie because that was filmed entirely in Phoenix, Arizona and yeah. I was I, I was growing up in Phoenix at that time. The the San Dimas Mall is actually the Metro Center Mall and I spent most of my childhood in that mall. I spent so much time as a like a suburban kid in white America. I spend so much time at that mall that I have about once or twice a month, I will have a Metro Center dream. Really? Like I'm being haunted. Yeah, I'm being haunted by a mall. And then when I finally got a job working with a major bookstore, it was the bookstore right next to Metro Center Mall. I spent all of my time there uh, in my 20s, too, drinking right next to Metro Center Mall. It was really – that mall meant a lot to me, and that mall is all over Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> that was one of those movies where it was really cool if you said that you were an extra, although you probably weren't. Yeah. I'd say about a third of the people I knew said that they were an extra on Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, but they definitely weren't. I was an extra in the movie <laughs> Jerry Maguire. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Cool. I specifically remember that my brother and I snuck out of the set so we could go home and watch Mystery Science Theater. Cool. All right. I think we're probably the only people to ever sneak out of the filming of a Tom Cruise movie to go and see Mystery Science Theater. That's <laughs> kind of historic now that you think about it. Yeah. We should wrap up this episode, though. But we could talk for nine more hours about this movie. We could, and and uh, I I find it funny that we disagree on it without without really disagreeing on it. We you know, disagree but, about you, our feelings of the movie, but we both love it. Yeah, you, you still kind of think it's a bad movie. I, I think it's a work of genius, and I think time will tell on this. <laughs> God, this this freaking movie. If anyone can be unembarrassed enough to watch this movie, then they'll have a whole bunch of fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Let's let's get this as a midnight show someplace. That would be awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so if anybody wants to contact us and provide any kind of feedback, you can email us at hope at undeadcow.com. Awesome. And be have sure any final words? Be sure and go see my blog, um, reverendsteve.blogspot.com. It's got a bunch of free movies on there, um, free bad movies and cinema insomnia and whatever the hell else I can find. Um, I'm I'm watching Firefly for the first time. I'm trying Those to watch are some good articles. Those are some I'm fun articles. Yeah, apparently if there's one thing that Firefly fans love more than Firefly, it's reading about someone who has never seen Firefly before. <laughs> I'm trying to tackle all of those TV shows that I always avoided because they were too popular. So I like I I, I I've never seen Battlestar Galactica. I've never mm -hmm. seen Firefly. I vaguely remember seeing the fourth Doctor of Doctor Who when I was growing up, but I've never really seen Doctor Who. So I'm trying to be more of a yes man in terms of all of those things I've avoided. So I'm watching yeah. Firefly, and after that I'm going to try and tackle Doctor Who, which is going to be difficult because apparently there's a million episodes. Skip and every, every person has a theory about where I should start. Yeah. No, oh, start with the eighth Doctor. Start with the twelfth Doctor. Start in two thousand four. Start in this. But I'm going to try. It might be impossible, but I'm going to try and start in the beginning. And from those articles, I totally agree with you about Kaylee. Okay. But she what I find really funny is that that girl is pretty much in everything that Joss Whedon has done. Really. She's the same type 
as Willow from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That's a good point. Yeah. Kind of, kind of mousy, kind of innocent, redhead. Yeah. And Man, what about Felicia Green Girl Day? Is what it is. What about Felicia Day in Doctor Horrible? Mm-hmm. It's the same girl. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't see Dollhouse. Yeah. I, I think we can put up a case that Black Widow is kind of mm, almost in the same family. Eh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That's a good point. So I, I find that funny. I think Kaylee is the cutest out of all of them. Oh but yeah, I did. I the boys had an had instant a, crush. Yeah. Instant crush on her. The boy's got a fetish. <laughs> Absolutely. It's that kind of girl. Uh, to be fair, in Avengers, if there's one person in that movie that's a manic pixie dream girl, it's obviously Agent Coulson. Agent Coulson? Mm-hmm. He's kind of hot. You know, yeah. in, in a kind of balding sort of way. Yeah. Have you ever se- have you seen the, the TV show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Have you seen that at all? I watch some, but, like, I'm not really a big fan of watching stuff on my computer. Yeah, I, I've gotten halfway through the f- I've gotten halfway through the first season, and I'm trying really hard to like it, because I like Marvel Comics and all the things that they've done, but it's, yeah. uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how I felt. I watched a couple of episodes, but it's not enough to change me to my computer, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there there weren't enough little references or anything like that. Although I hear that it tied in quite well with Captain America: Winter Soldier. Well, that's the, the the one thing that keeps me watching this show is the fact that it's it's going to be weaved through every single solitary Marvel movie. In yeah. in the beginning of the show, it deals with issues that come from Iron Man 3, and then halfway through it, it deals with Thor 2. At the end, it deals with Winter Soldier. So I'd be interested to continue seeing this if this means that eventually I'm going to be seeing a Guardians of the Galaxy-themed episode and an Ant-Man-themed episode and all of that sort of stuff. I would continue watching this. Like, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead of the Marvel world. Right. Uh Uh-huh. Excellent movie, that one. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and the, and from the episodes I've watched, there's really not enough of that. You know, there yeah. isn't enough interplay with the other movies and worlds and things like that. And it's it it could be a really great way of introducing a character that nobody's ever heard of and get him at least a little bit of backstory before throwing him into the movie. Yeah. Personally, I believe that all of the Marvel movies are going to be crap until they do Spider Ham. Spider Ham, yes. Spider Ham. Um, Kids comic book. Peter Porker. He worked at the mm-hmm. Daily Beagle with J. Jonah Jackal, and he dated Mary Jane Water <laughs> Buffalo. And he got bitten by a radioactive spider, and he became Spider Ham. It was my favorite comic book when I was a kid, and I am a big, huge champion of that. My idea for I... Spider Ham movie would be a parody of all of those god-awful Tobey Maguire movies, but you do it with Spider-Ham instead. It's golden. Marvel, give me a call. I've got ideas for this. It's going to be huge. Mm-hmm. Like a Marvel well, you, anime. You heard him, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Great yeah. idea. You never know. I mean, they took the risk on Guardians of the Galaxy. You know? I remember and that was a, reading that was a ballsy move. Yeah, I remember reading so many articles before that movie came out. Marvel's big gamble, Marvel's big risk, can Marvel do it? And it it, it just became the number three highest grossing Marvel movie of all time. So suck it. You know, I I, I don't really get I don't get like that. You know, like I don't care much about the movies coming out and oh it's going to be terrible, oh it's going to be. Radio. I don't really think it I really that care that about this sort of much, thing. But what the same way that I like the galaxy for a while I was just really just stay on it. But yeah. uh until I saw one shot of Rocket Raccoon and I was like, Okay. I get it now. Yeah. We are all so pre programmed to think Raccoon that it's gonna be some cute little Disney and I saw him and I was like, No, that's 
like a real fucking raccoon. Okay, can I, like, can I say, a, go ahead. Can, can I spit out a theory that I have for you? I'm really worried with the way that DC comic movies are co- are coming out here. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of people are. I was never a DC fan, so I I, I don't care. I was know? never a DC fan, but the idea of I was really excited when I heard that the next film was going to be Batman versus Superman, and I thought, oh well, that's wonderful. There's a huge backstory there. That's going to be something amazing. But now that they've seen what Marvel's doing, they want the next film to be Justice League. So mm-hmm. now the Superman versus Batman movie is also going to have Wonder Woman, also going to have Aquaman, also going to have Cyborg, also going to have The yeah. Flash, also going to have Green Lantern. And it's as if Iron Man 2 also had the plot of Iron Man 3 and Thor and Captain America, and then they immediately went to Avengers. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to see Superman versus Batman. I don't want to see Superman versus Batman and everyone else. Yeah. I'm really worried about that. I'm worried that DC is going to just screw over all of the comic book movies. I've been so excited because so many comic book movies have come out. I actually cried when I saw The Avengers because I was so happy being this yeah. lonely Mexican kid living living in the middle of suburban white America with no friends, reading Avengers comic books, and, and thinking, wouldn't it be cool if one day there was a movie, but that'll never happen. I was, I've been so happy that there's just been this wonderful resurgence of comic book movies, and here comes DC to screw it up. Yeah. Uh, I, I cried a couple of times during Guardians of the Galaxy. That, that movie was amazing. I, and, you know, I, I, don't, I don't, like, hold back or anything like that, because it's like, I paid my fucking money. You're, you're, you want to make me cry? That's, that's my money's worth. That's part of the ride, you know? Yeah. So, like, when his mom died, I started to squirt them. I, I didn't cry too much during Guardians of the Galaxy, but I'll tell you, because I have kids, I see a lot of kids' movies, and I I cry during about 80% of these goddamn movies. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, Wally, Toy Story 3, I, I just, I can't stand watching these movies. Because, like, all of these movies have seemed to be created just to make the parents cry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Toy Story 3, I just wanted to slap. I haven't gotten around to seeing that one. Ah, uh, it, it, it was solely created to make adults cry, and that's it, period. Yeah. Piss me off. <laughs> but, hey, that's another episode. That is another episode. So next week, we will do the monkeys in the movie called <laughs> Head. <laughs> yes, we're going to be getting Head next week. This is another good movie. Tune in, people. Yes. This, it's going to surprise you. <laughs> yes, it is. All right. Uh, have a good night. Tune in next time. Yes, tune in next week, kids. Bye.